Okay, hello everyone. Today we are going to learn about cultivating mushrooms at home. So before we go into the procedure, I want to tell you what is a mushroom. Mushroom is a fleshy spore-bearing protein body of a fungus that is typically produced above ground on soil or in, on its food source. That means mushroom is the fruit of the particular fungus. Uh, for example, like the mango is the fruit obtained from the mango tree. So because of the rich nutritional values of mushrooms, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations has emphasized the adoption of mushrooms as an ideal food for reporting hungry masses of the developing countries and to combat malnutrition in the world. India is one of the top 10 mega diverse nations and fortunate enough to have varied agroclimatic conditions, abundance of agro waste and relatively low cost labor, which are all beneficial for mushroom cultivation. So what is mushroom cultivation? It is a technical process which involves different stages of production that is substrate preparation, inoculation, spawning, and harvesting. Before we go into the techniques for mushroom cultivation, I want to highlight some benefits of mushroom farming. Mushroom farming can be started in any season. The demand of labor is not high for mushroom farming. Skilled work or skilled worker is not required. And the demand for mushroom increases every day. Farmers are receiving high mushroom cost per kg. And if the farmers can export their products, then it will bring more profit. At the same time, boosting India's global position in mushroom market. So these are some benefits of growing mushrooms. I want to show you some pictures of the different types of edible mushrooms that are available in Nagaland and the rest of the world. This is Schizophyllum commune. This is the Tumula idotis, or commonly known as shiitake, one of the most prized after edible mushroom. Both of these, they, are, they have medicinal properties. From both these mushrooms, an anti-cancer compound is extracted. From this Schizophyllum protein bomb polysaccharide will be extracted and here also PSP protein bomb polysaccharide lentinine will be extracted and these are already in use by pharmaceutical industries. So about, apart from the taste and flavor they provide, they have medicinal properties. So these are also some different types of edible mushrooms that are available here. This is termite mushroom, this is a golden oyster mushroom, this is a chanterelle. This is, uh, I believe, the second most famous edible mushroom in the world. And this is again two different types of oyster mushrooms. This is another type of termite mushroom, and this is lentinous sajuricaju. And from this lentinous species, also lentinin and anti-cancer compound is extracted. So if we plan to grow mushrooms at home, where to grow them? Mushrooms prefer cool, dark, and humid growing conditions. So the basement is, is an ideal location or a spot under the sink could also work. But if we want to grow mushrooms on a larger scale, then we, then we will require a separate growing room. And preferably, the mushroom growing room should be separated into two, a dark room for incubation and a mm, well-lighted room for fruiting, the fruiting chamber. But water rooms should be well ventilated. In order to make a simple mushroom room, it will cost between 5,000 to 10,000. I've made one at my home, so it doesn't cost much to grow mushrooms. So we need to decide what type of mushrooms we want to grow. The easiest to grow at home are the oysters, lentinous, button, and shiitake. But the button and shiitake, they prefer in colder climatic conditions. So for this, if we plan to grow these two types of mushroom, we shall require an AC to grow this type 
of mushrooms. For oyster and lentinus, you can grow them at normal temperature. So the method for growing mushrooms will be similar, but the substrate differs. The different substrate requirements reflect the different nutritional needs of each species, but almost all the species can be grown readily on straw and sodas as a substrate. So today we are going to learn how to cultivate mushrooms using sodas and paddy straw as a substrate. So these are the four types of mushrooms that we can grow easily at home. Oyster, lentinus, shiitake, and button. Shiitake can be grown on wood logs. So these wood logs first has to be drilled and after drilling, we are going to inoculate it with spawn, the mushroom seed. But here we use spawn that is cultured on wood chips. But this uh, method takes longer time for fruiting to occur. It takes a year before the mushroom starts to uh, fruit. But it will produce food or the fruit for longer time. So this is one method that is being used by farmers in Nagaland right now. In this slide, I have summarized the entire procedure to grow mushrooms. We shall be discussing each steps in detail now. First, in order to grow mushroom, what do we need? We need the spawn or a mushroom seed. So what is this mushroom spawn? Spawn is the living fungal culture or the fungal mycelium that is grown on a substrate. Substrate like grains or sodas or wood chips. The spawn provides a backbone to any mushroom growing operation. So without the spawn, we won't be able to cultivate mushrooms. So I'm going to discuss briefly the spawn preparation techniques. We cannot prepare this spawn at home if we don't have a sterilization chamber like this one, laminar airflow. So we need one sterilization chamber if we want to produce spawns at home. So if we cannot do it, we can easily buy spawns from the market that are available and also from the horticulture departments. The government also sells spawns. So we can buy and we can grow. But I'm going to give um, the explanation on how to produce spawn because this area of mushroom production is very, uh, very much popular now because farmers are shifting from growing mushrooms to um, producing spawns and selling them. This is what a commercial mushroom, uh, spawn, mushroom spawn will look like. So this is a picture that I have asked from one mushroom lab in Dimapu to send. So this farmer is selling these spawns at one, 100 rupees per kg. So this is a cultivator spawn. So this brings huge income to mushroom farmers. So I'm going to share the technique on spawn preparation now. In order to prepare spawn, the first thing that we need or the first material that we need is the pure culture of that particular mushroom that we want to cultivate. So if we want to grow oyster mushroom, for example, then we need the spawn of oyster. So we need oyster mushroom spawns. So um, we need to collect some oyster mushrooms and then um, two or three caps will do. Then we wash it, we sterilize it using 70% ethanol. And all this will be done inside the sterilization chamber. So after washing and sterilization, we are going to um, use a sterile knife and cut the mushroom into half and from the neck portion, which are going to take out a small piece of the mushroom tissue, very small piece, using a sterile needle. Then um, we are going to inoculate the mushroom tissue onto the nutrient media which we have prepared. So for culturing mushrooms, potato dextrose agar is a common 
and easily available nutrient media which we can use to produce or to grow the pure culture. So this media also has to be prepared and then sterilized before inoculation. So after inoculation is done, we cover the petri plate and then we seal it with a bar of film so that moisture won't get inside and as well as to reduce the contamination rate. So after inoculation is done, we shall transfer the petri plates to the incubation room or a dark room. So for this, we require temperature between 25 to 28 degrees. We can just keep it um, inside a drawer or inside a cabinet, all right, in a dark room. If the room is not dark, we can just keep it inside the drawer. That's how I do. But we should make sure that it is clean. It is at least sanitized with 70% alcohol or the hand sanitizer. After that, within a week, we can see that the battery plate is filled with white cottony type of growth, that is the fungal mycelium. So if there is no other colonies, that means the pure culture is successful, that there is no contamination. We have achieved what we want, that is the pure culture of oyster mushroom. If there is contamination, then we, we shall have to discard that particular petri plate. So now we have the pure culture. So next we need the substrate. So for preparing spawn, we can either prepare using grains or sawdust or wood chips. Wood chips are best for growing shiitake mushrooms. So um, for any type of substrate, we need to do sterilization. So this sterilization can be done in an autoclave, or if autoclave is not available, we can use the normal pressure cooker that we have at home. So if we are going to prepare only um, a small quantity of spawn, the normal pressure cooker will do, but if we are going to do 10 kg or 5 kg, um, if we are going to prepare 10 kg or 5 kg of spawn, then we need 20 kg or 40 kg capacity pressure cooker. So we are going to sterilize the substrate in a pressure cooker. After that, we need to pull it down. After pulling inside the sterilization chamber, we are going to inoculate the fungal mycelium with the substrate. So we will use the sterile needle and take out a very small quantity of the mycelium. We don't need much. And then we are going to put it in the center of the substrate. And then we are just going to shake it a little after the inoculation is done. And then we are going to transfer this into a dark room for incubation and colonization. So after a week, preferably after seven days, we can see that the grains or the sawdust or wood chips are fully covered with white cottony mycelium. That means we have the spawn now. So this spawn, that is a first generation spawn, because this is prepared directly from the pure culture. So this, is, this will be called as the master spawn. So from this master spawn, we have to prepare the cultivator spawn or the commercial spawn. And this is the spawn that is available in the market. We don't sell the master spawn, but we sell the cultivator spawn. And cultivator spawn is a spawn that we use for growing mushrooms. So from this master spawn, we can make huge quantities of cultivator spawn. So what we need to do, we need to wash and sterilize the spawn. If you are using grains, then we need to boil the grains and let it dry. After that, we need to put it inside some you know, autoclavable bags and then sterilize it inside the um, pressure cooker. Or else, if we are using sawdust, we need to packet it and then we go for sterilization. Wood chips also, we need to wash, let it dry, and then pack it and then do the sterilization part. So after sterilization is done, it will be cooled. And then inside the sterilization chamber, we shall use a small quantity of the master spawn and inoculate the substrate for the cultivator spawn. So one master spawn culture can inoculate many, um, uh, many cultivator spawns, all right? And then 
this will be the second generation of the uh, second generation of sperm from the pure culture and the first generation from the master sperm so till second generation we can subculture from third generation it won't give us good result for growing mushrooms so what this spawn preparation companies they do they will prepare a cultivator spawn till the second generation first generation and second generation and what we get in the market is mostly the second generation of spawns and not the first generation and the spawns that are available in, in Dimapu the particular farmer who sells he sells the first generation spawns and that is why there are many buyers because the results are very good from the spawns that he sells I'm also using his spawns right now it keeps very fleshy and good quantity of mushrooms. So now we have the spawn. You can see here, this is a bullet mushroom or semi mushroom. From this, we make the pure culture. Pure culture will look like this white, forty, cottony type mycelium. And then the master spawn, and from master spawn, we make the commercial spawn. And this spawn, from this spawn, we grow the mushrooms. So now we have the spawn with us. So what we need to do, we need to get the substrate ready for inoculation. So if we are using paddy straw, first we need to chop the straw into smaller pieces, preferably between one to three inches. Why this is done? Because the mycelium colonizes the smaller pieces of straw at a much faster rate. Because of this, we chop the straw into small pieces and in addition it makes the whole procedure of washing and pasteurization easier so after we chop the straw we need to soak the straw in normal water with a little of detergent or dish soap so this is done to reduce the bacterial load that is present in the straw which will decrease the chances of contamination so we can do this incubation between 30 to 60 minutes depending on the quantity of the straw that we are going to use. So after incubation time is over, next we need to wash the straw two to three times in clean water. This is done so that no traces of the detergent remains on the straw. Now we have the straw that is washed and clean. So next what we need to do, we need to go for pasteurization. So for pasteurization, there are three different methods one is hot water pasteurization then steam pasteurization and cold water line pasteurization so all the three are very easy and can be done at home so for hot water pasteurization the wash straw we need to soak in hot water um, between 65 to 82 degree for one to two hours this time will depend on the quantity of the straw that we are going to pasteurize. So if the temperature falls during this period, we need to add more boiling water to increase the temperature above 65. So we can monitor the temperature using a simple thermometer that is available in pharmacies, this one. So after pasteurization is done, we need to drain and cool the straw. So rapid cooling can be achieved by spreading the straw out on a thin table or floor or sun drying. I prefer sun drying method. This is what I do. We can do any uh, anyone either on a clean floor you can let the you can put a mat and then let the straw dry overnight or use a thin table if the quantity of straw is less and if it is high quantity of straw that you are washing and pasteurizing then you need it's better to do sun drying so this is how I do chop wash pasteurize if less quantity in small pots you can do vessels or if it's large quantity you can use a log drum and sun drying these are my pictures so that is about hot water pasteurization. Next, what we need to 
Next, we need to discuss about steam pasteurization and cold water. So steam is, this method is similar to hot water pasteurization. The only difference will, uh, is that here the pre-washed straw will be packed into small boxes or autoclavable poly bags or the polythene bags. So we are going to stuff the straw into small bags and then tie it properly so that water doesn't get inside during pasteurization. So the temperature should be between 58 to 62, monitored by the thermometer and for four hours. So um, after we are going to do this inside a drum, if we are going to do at home. So we are going to put the individual straw packets inside. After that, we are going to put water and then we are going to close it and put a heavy weight so that it doesn't come out. And then we are going to heat it and maintain the temperature for four hours. So after four hours is done, we can take it out and let it cool. Before inoculation, the straw should be cold. So this is about steam pasteurization. Now, cold water line pasteurization. In this method, we use normal water that is treated with hydrated, hydrated lime or calcium hydroxide. So we, we have to soak the straw in this lime water for 12 to 24 hours. That means the whole day and whole night. After that, the next day only we can uh, dry them and then go for inoculation. And this method is usually done in large uh, quantities of straw, especially in mushroom farms. They use this method. So if we are going to grow mushrooms at home and we are going to deal with less quantity, then we can either go for steam or hot water pasteurization. So for cold water lime pasteurization, we have to use only hydrated lime and not the garden lime or the quick lime because these are high in magnesium and hydrated lime is low in magnesium which will raise the pH of the water effectively um, killing all the microorganisms or most of the contaminants that's present in the substrate. So for this reason, hydrated lime is used. So now we have the spawn, we, we have done the pasteurization of the substrate, now it's ready. Now we need to do inoculation and spawning. So to begin inoculation, first we need to check whether the straw has the right amount of moisture content. So for this, first we need to sterilize our hands or we, we can use gloves and then take a little amount of straw and squeeze it very tight. If water comes out, that means uh, too much moisture is present in the straw and we need to um, let it dry for more time. And Uh, sir, am I audible? Yes, Miss, uh, you are audible. Yeah, you can go ahead. Because the when it is now. Okay, it is not very really clear. It is not very clear anyway. But we cannot fix the problem. It is because of network. So. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Network is going yeah, please go ahead. We can see your slides too. Okay. Then, okay, thank you, sir. So for inoculation, like I was saying, that first we need to check whether the moisture that's present in the straw is the right content. Mm, some, they use 80% of mm, dryness, but I prefer 60% because uh, if there's too much moisture, the substrate becomes susceptible to contaminants. So for this reason, it's better that we achieve at least 60% dryness in the straw. So if you squeeze it very tight, water should not come out. So if water is not coming out, that means we have achieved the right amount of moisture content in the straw. And we can go for inoculation now. For inoculation, 
we use only 10 to 15 percent of the spawn in relation to the straw quantity. So we don't need to, to be exact on this. We can just have the idea when we work. So what we can do for inoculation, we can simply mix the spawn and the straw in a large vessel. But I prefer the other method where I will show you now because while mixing contamination, there's high chances of contamination. So it's better, you know, whatever container that you are going to use for growing mushroom, either a plastic container like this one that I use at home, this is me doing inoculation, or else you can use this autoclavable bags, PP bags. These are found in 500 gram size, 1 kg, 2 kg, and in very large quantity, uh, large capacity size. So we can use this in these bags to grow mushrooms. This is called a mushroom log. So what I do is, instead of mixing, I first put a layer of straw. After that, I, I will put a very small quantity of the spawn. After that, I'll put the second layer of straw spawn. Then straw spawn, straw spawn, I shall continue till, till the size that I want or till um, the size of the PP bag. So after this is done, if we are using polythene bags, we need to tie it tightly. We can put a cotton plug in between, or else it's not necessary. We can we just need to tie it tightly. After that, if we are using polythene bags, what we need to do after this is we need to punch the holes inside. So for this, whatever we are using to make the hole, it should be sterilized. And we can punch the holes, not very near. It should be a little far away from one another. This is done so that during inoculation, the spawn can breathe. The mushroom mycelium should be able to breathe while it's running along the substrate. And also after spawning is over, the mushroom will come out on these holes only. So we can do this outside. And why we don't need a sterilization chamber for this step of inoculation is because we do pasteurization. So this pasteurization of mushroom substrate was discovered and was introduced by Paul Stamet, a world-renowned mycologist and mushroom scientist. And we are following his procedure for pasteurization and growing mushrooms. So in case if you want to use this type of containers that I'm using, these are 10 kg milk containers. First, you need to drill holes and cover it with tap so that light doesn't pass during the inoculation time. And at the bottom of the container also you should fill holes so that the mycelium can breathe. And in the same procedure you can layer the hay, then you put the spawn, again um, layer the substrate, then straw, uh, then the spawn. Continue till it reaches the top of the container. But make sure that whether it's a plastic container or it's a polythene bag, you need to stuff it tightly. Mushroom mycelium grows best when it is tightly packed. If you stuff the spawn straw ratio loosely, you won't get a good harvest. I've, I'm saying this from my experience and even other people who are working with share the same, kind, the same experience uh, regarding this stuffing method. You need to stuff it very tightly for the mycelium to grow and for us to get better harvest of mushrooms. So, inoculation is done. After inoculation is done, we need to shift the mushroom containers into a dark room where the spawn will run, spawn run or spawning. So during this time, we should not um, disturb the mushroom containers or the poly bags. So depending on the size of our container or the poly bags, it will take from 7 to 14 days for the mushroom to be able to fully colonize the substrate. So after 14 days, what we can do is we can take it to the footing chamber or we can keep it outside 
uh, where shaded light is available, not direct heated light, sunlight. Or else, in the dark room itself, we can um, have some lighting. If we don't have two rooms, only one room, then we can do it both ways. So the room should be well ventilated and light should be given and we need to start watering the mushroom bags. Either twice or once every day. You know, twice or once will depend on the temperature of the outside environment. So once mushroom fruiting starts, it takes only two to three days for the mushroom to mature and we can harvest. So this is my mushroom growing house. What I did is, um, this, as you can see, these are only um, paper, right? I have made this with paper and tin sheets only. It took me only 8,000 to make this house. And on the opposite of this wall, um, I have put two types of um, polythene, one black and one transparent. So during incubation, I put the black one so that it will be dark and when it's putting time, I roll it up and let the transparent be there so that light can pass. So in this way, I prepared mushroom growing house. You can also do the same at home. For poly bags, we, can, we need to keep it like this, hanging, and the containers can be kept in the corner. So once inoculation is done and the spawn is run successfully, the spawning is complete, we shall find this white mycelium covered all over the substrate. So that means mm, we have achieved the spawning. The spawning rate is successful. In case if there are black colonies or green or orange colonies, that means contamination by uh, trichoderma or Aspergillus fungus, okay, by microfungi. In that case, we need to remove that particular bag or else it will contaminate the remaining bags of mushroom. So after this, after this is done, we need to start watering. When you see this, you should know that it's time to water the mushrooms. So early morning and evening, you can do during summer and during winter, once will do. So when the mycelium have, has matured, we shall see small pinheads coming out through the punched holes that we have done. And the growth rate is very fast. If you see these pinheads in early in the morning, by afternoon you shall see the mushroom this size. And the next day you can see the mushroom is fully matured and we can pluck it out. And for plucking, we just need to do one twist in one direction without disturbing the mycelium because Mm. One mushroom bag can give us a maximum of three or four flushes of mushroom, all right? We can harvest three or four times. The fourth time, it will give us only one, two mushrooms, all right? But till the third time, we shall have good quantity of mushroom to harvest, provided the entire procedure we have done it correctly and we have done it with proper care and the watering. If we water too much, the stalk will become too long and the mushroom will be unhealthy. The cap, it won't be mm, broad or it won't be fleshy or healthy. So we should be careful while watering. So you can see, I've tried to click the pictures in every stage. This is a pin head and it will grow. So it will take only two or three days once the pinheads has appeared on the mushroom grow bags. So for the containers, you need to open this and see whether the mycelium is fully covered. So you can see white cottony mycelium fully um, covering till the top layer. And for, since this is 10 kg capacity container, it takes 25 to 30 days for colonization, for spawning. So only after one month, you are going to be able to um, get your fruit, the mushroom. So, so after one month, you need to take away the cellotape that was applied in the first stage, and then the pinheads will appear, and then it will grow within two to three days. 
So this gives good mushroom fruit because the quantity is more. So what I do for this during winter, I after inoculation is done, I keep it uh, outside near the veranda or corridor so that it will receive shaded light, not the direct sunlight, and watering also becomes easy. We need to open this and put one cup of water early in the morning for the containers. So this is how you can harvest after your work is done. This is oyster mushroom that I've cultivated on sawdust as substrate. We shall see the sawdust procedure in a video. So you see this is the fungal mycelium. There is no contamination, no black or orange or yellow colonies. Even the cellotep has become fully white. That means it's time to remove the cellotep and let the mushroom grow. It takes minimum 25 to 30 days to fully colonize this 10 kg capacity of container. So you see the mushrooms will grow in this way, in this container. So this is Lentidus sajurkajum. The size of the cap depends on the type of mushroom that we are growing. This is from baby straw in poly bags. Once the mushroom matures, we can remove the poly bag. So this is the last mushroom bag that is left at home right now. So now we are going to see how sawdust is used as a substrate for growing mushrooms, the sterilization procedure and how it is uh, how, how many days it takes for colonization and to fruit. We need sawdust with bran and lime. We need to mix them and then put it in PP bags, polythene bags for pasteurization. And we are going to do steam pasteurization for this. So in the drum for five hours, we are going to steam it. So since this is sawdust, it takes longer time to pull. So after pulling, we are going to put the spawn on top only. And then this also takes 30 days for inoculation for spawn run. After 30 days only, we shall have the fruit. The advantage is that we can, we get sawdust throughout the year and we can use it for growing mushrooms because petty straw is difficult to obtain. It's not available every season. So people are now turning to sawdust as a substrate for producing mushrooms. So this is the basic steps of growing mushrooms. I hope all of you have understood and will try at home. We know the importance and potential of mushrooms. Mushrooms have the solution to some extent on many of the present day problems, like it gives us quality food, which is suitable for all age groups from child to aged people. The medicinal mushrooms are solutions to many of the health problems like diabetes, high cholesterol, heart problems, arthritic problems, and so on. It also helps in employment generation to some extent. And the substrate that we use during mushroom cultivation uh, that can be exploited as a source of manure after the harvest is done. So it helps to clean the environment. So there are so many benefits of mushroom cultivation. Hence, mushrooms are a valuable natural resource to mankind and should be exploited judiciously for the betterment of society. So I hope you all learned something. I'm very happy to share with you 
the techniques of mushroom cultivation. I hope it was beneficial. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Tosinula, for your wonderful presentation. And I wish our participants, especially our student friends, they have learned something from here and they will try to cultivate mushroom uh, experimentally. Anyway, I want to uh, give time for the discussion now. So if any questions, any interrogations that our participants have, you please use the chat box and our resource person will be ready to satisfy you. Thank you, Jinat. I hope you have understood and I want you all to try at home. It will make you earn extra pocket money. Well, uh, it seems there is no any question from the participants. So now I'd like to uh, call Nijam to uh, give the vote of thanks. Uh. A very good afternoon to you all, uh, and thank you, sir, for giving me this time. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to deliver uh, my immense gratitude to one and everyone present here today. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank the uh, Department of Botany for St. John College uh, for organizing such an uh, uh, online webinar, or we can say workshop. And I believe through this uh, workshop, every one of us have gained uh, a good sum of knowledge about mushroom and as well as about its cultivation as well. And I would like to give a big thanks to the resource person, Dr. Toshinong Ao, for giving her time and sharing her work and knowledge and the techniques uh, regarding the cultivation of mushroom to one and every one of us. And for me, uh, this mushroom is one kind of a favorite uh, food for me, and I believe that it will also be a favorite food for uh, every one of you as well. So we spend a huge amount of money every time when we purchase this from the market. And thank you, ma'am, for sharing your knowledge and the techniques so that like through your this uh, knowledge and the techniques, uh, we are able now, now we are able uh, to harvest this at, uh, at our home and we can uh, get a good amount of uh, fresh, beautiful and healthy organic mushroom at our home without spending uh, um, money for buying this mushroom. So I really, very really thank you, ma'am, for that. And last but not the least, I thank each and every participants for giving their precious time and uh, taking part in this uh, webinar. And... I, and I hopefully uh, uh, I believe that in the coming future also you will be able to participate in this way. And uh, Nam uh, Tushinongla, uh, I also believe and pray that in the coming future you will be able to share your knowledge uh, regarding so many other works to us. And yeah, uh, I, uh, once again, I thank you all. And I give this time back to Sir again. Uh, thank you, Nizam. So uh, here our session over. So I congratulate and I thank all the participants from the different parts of Nagaland and Northeast. Uh, we enjoyed and your participation encouraged us all. So we are very grateful to you.